What's up, calculus students? Last homework of unit nine, only one unit to go after this. And we talked about in the last two lessons how antiderivatives are important. We got to be able to take them. And we're going to deal with special antiderivatives in this lesson where we are going to be undoing O's and I's. We remember that when we first took derivatives of chains, we used this technique, this O and I technique. We understood the concept of whatever starts in parentheses stays in parentheses for derivatives. Then in unit six, we talked about how that is still going to be the case if we're going backwards. Like here, we have stuff inside the parentheses. When I'm taking an antiderivative, that stuff inside the parentheses stays inside the parentheses. Okay. What we did in unit six, which was um, the simple undoing of f of ax plus b, which again is a chain, we said take the antiderivative of the outside, whatever starts on the inside stays on the inside. And then we talked about the need to undo the derivative of the inside. We know with the o and the i, you have i's derivative. Well, this is undoing i's derivative. This is undoing Vegas's derivative. So what we did in unit six was just take the antiderivative of cosine. What starts in the parentheses stays inside the parentheses, and we needed to undo the derivative of 5x, and we have a one-fifth. And we did this uh, pretty easily, understanding uh, e to a power. The inside is the 4x. So we like took the antiderivative of e to the parentheses, which was e to the parentheses. Like that's something that's a little bit confusing that we are taking an antiderivative, but nothing happens. And then we undo the derivative of the inside. And then whenever we have powers, like the next three, it's probably best to do this one first. We would take the antiderivative of the outside. We'd have a fifth and a one fifth. We had Vegas and we undo Vegas's derivative. For this one, probably best slash is best to rewrite this as a negative power in the numerator because the power rule for derivatives and antiderivatives only work in the numerator. So we get this, we Take the antiderivative of the outside. What starts on the inside stays on the inside, and we need to undo its derivative, giving me this negative one tenth, 5x minus 6 to the negative second plus c. And if you want to rewrite that, you can. Uh, the 1 stays up, the 10 stays down, the 5x minus 6 can move down. Cool. So we go up, back up to this top right one. You might not see it, but we're kind of used to doing it. We rewrite that 5 minus 6x as being a negative first power. Now we have to remember, this is important for today's lesson, that whatever, um, like the power rule works for every power, whatever power you have, except a negative first power. You got to remember that with a negative first power, if you tried to use the power rule and you add 1, you get to 0. That just doesn't work. It's not going to give you the correct antiderivative. You remember the special derivative of log is 1 over x. So then um, the antiderivative of 1 over x or the antiderivative of something to the negative first power is a log absolute. We have Vegas. We undo its derivative. The derivative of the inside is negative 6. So I need a negative 1 sixth. This one, very much the same, only I would rewrite this square root as a negative one half power. You're probably worried about the three. It probably should have had more examples with constants in front. It's just a constant. It's not constant times x's. It's just a constant. Don't worry about it. You can pull it out if you wanted to. Uh, you don't take the antiderivative of the 3. It's just a constant. If I ask you to take the antiderivative of 3 cos x, 
you'd say, oh, it's just three sine x. Three sine x's derivative is three cos x. This three is okay. So I just take the antiderivative of the outside by adding one and multiplying by the reciprocal. I still have the three, but I need to undo the derivative of the inside. I need a negative one seven. That's review. This is review. Just because you're going to see something that looks complicated does not mean we're going to necessarily have to undo the chain rule and undo O's and I's. Remember to simplify. You will have a specific test question, very similar to one of these three, where the process of taking the antiderivative is actually to simplify what you can by just like distributing everything. And then since it's an addition, since it's plus plus, you take the antiderivative of each individual piece. This is not like a, a, a product of a constant times. This is a plus plus plus. So we take the antiderivative of each of these pluses. Add one, multiply by the reciprocal. Don't forget your plus C. Probably this one you're going to have problems with, but it shouldn't be crazy. Like x times x is x squared. This is where everybody's going to forget your uh, power rules, your exponent rules. What's x times root x? Well, I start with x times x to the one half. I know that when you're multiplying, you add the exponents. This is five X's being added total. So this is one and a half X's being multiplied. Not trying to trick you. If you mess up on that one, it's not the biggest deal. It's really the second one. That's like the, the key one that you're going to see on your test. Multiplied by the reciprocal. It's like undoing the power. That's what antiderivatives really are. Just undoing things. If you're dividing multiple things by one thing, you can split it up into different fractions by dividing each of them. I have x plus 3 after dividing, and then I can take the antiderivative of both of those. Okay, so those are the simple ones. We handled these in Unit 6. These we talked about in Unit 6 as well, antiderivatives where you just need to simplify. But then we get to the next set. And we're kind of going in a reverse order of what we did with the chain rule. For example, I'm going to just remind you of the chain rule. Like if I say take the derivative of sine 3x plus 4 or 3x squared plus 4. How about that? When you guys first use the chain rule, I said use this technique. This technique is going to help you. O and I. And like identify the outside, identify the inside. Remember the concept of what starts on the inside stays on the inside. And many of you still to this day use the O's and the I's. And I think that's great. If you, if you like using them, keep using them. Is this technique. Formulaic process, you will always get the right answer provided you do it correctly. However, many of you have jumped past this. You kind of know what you're doing. You go straight to like getting the answer. Well, going backwards, we're going to go in an opposite order. What do I mean? Like these first ones we did, we kind of just did it. We just took the antiderivative and we knew to undo the derivative of the inside. We didn't use a specialized technique, which is what we're going to be doing on the next set of problems. But when they get more complicated, it's going to help us to, to use a technique if we're not sure what to do, because yeah, these, these look a little bit more intense and a lot of people will have misunderstandings on what it looks like to undo O's and I's here. So I could, I could, some of you can, 
get the answer right away, which is a fourth, a one fourth, a one over four x squared, sorry, one over four x cubed, this is the eight x cubed, to get your answer one half x to the fourth plus two, plus c. I just did it, I just got the answer. Kind of undid the chain rule, I undid the O's and O's. But I tried to teach this last year, just to like go with conceptual and not use a technique, and it kind of failed. A lot of students really messed up on the fact that, you know, why aren't we taking the antiderivative of this? Why did you just leave this here? What's going on, Mr. Messner? So uh, I'm going back to how kind of I originally taught it, which was use substitution. Use substitution is like the undoing of the O and I technique. All right. And it actually does things in a different order. What we did in this first set was worry about the antiderivative of the outside first. So we kind of thought about antiderivatives first. And then we worried about undoing the derivative of the inside second. U substitution does things in a different order, which is, you know, unfortunate. I wish it was the same, but it's just not. It says, let's undo the derivative of the inside first. And then let's worry about the antiderivative second. And here's what it looks like. Just like when we did O and I, we're going to want to do some work on the side. Like you wrote O, I, you wrote what O was, you wrote what I was. Uh, here is the work on the side with U substitution. You will set U equal to the, the inside, the vagus, the stuff that starts in the parentheses that's going to have to stay in the parentheses. So we start with this on the outside, on the inside, sorry. But the work is on the key is we need to undo the derivative of this. We're going to undo the derivative of the inside. So what we're going to do on the side is write what the derivative of the inside is. So we're going to take the derivative of u equals the inside. We're going to write it a very unique way. We're going to write it as like a partial derivative. That way it'll make sense. When we kind of substitute it back in. I'm going to write u's derivative as du. I'm going to write x to the fourth derivative, not just as 4x cubed, but as 4x cubed dx. And now this is the derivative. We have to undo this derivative. And here comes a key step. We're going to solve for dx, or we're going to understand that we need to like divide by the derivative of the inside. Just like we did on the first set of problems, we need to undo the derivative. We needed like the reciprocal of the derivative. Here's the reciprocal of the derivative, okay? Now, the purpose behind this is we're going to worry about the stuff outside first. We're going to undo the derivative first. We're going to say, okay, I got Vegas. Write Vegas as u. And I have the undone derivative of Vegas, which I'm going to replace dx with. So this is why we write this partial derivative, so we can see this equation of what dx or the derivative of like x is. It can be undone. And now what we'll do is rewrite everything just with this substitution. 8x cubed stays. The parentheses cubed stay. You could keep it as parentheses cubed if you wanted to, but we're saying, ah, well, that's just you. And that's helpful for very specific, unique problems that require you to rewrite things using u substitution. And then the undone derivative is 1 over 4x cubed du. Now, here is the process. We are going to undo the derivative of the inside first. So we can see that the x cubes will cancel. We just undid some of the derivatives, and all of a sudden the x's go away. And the 8 times the 1 fourth, since it's multiplication, it can be done in any order, turns into 2. So I took the 8 and the 1 fourth, I got 2. I took the x cubes, they went away. And I have our parentheses cubed. We take the antiderivative now. We 
undo, we undid the derivative of Vegas first. We undid the derivative of the inside. That's done. Now we work on the antiderivative last. The antiderivative is of parentheses cubed is parentheses to the fourth power times the fourth. This is the key step a lot of people forget. They do all the work, but they forget. Don't forget to take the antiderivative of the outside. Take the antiderivative of the parentheses cubed. I took the antiderivative of the parentheses cubed. I still have the two. It's just a constant. Don't take the antiderivative of it. And all of a sudden, I can see where my answer comes from. One half, what starts on the inside stays on the inside to the fourth plus c. One half x to the fourth plus two to the fourth plus c. Okay, and that's it. We're just going to repeat that process, this OI technique, but undoing it. You, you will undo O and I. So, away we go. Focus on the inside, undo its derivative. That is the derivative. Here is the derivative undone. Go ahead and replace this with just parentheses to the fourth. Well, we're actually replacing it with u. So that it's like, yeah, it's something to the fourth. I have the undone derivative right here, which will help me see, okay, don't worry about antiderivatives yet. Let's just undo the derivative first. And now we'll worry about the antiderivative of the parentheses to the fourth power. We have stuff to the fifth times one fifth. So I'm going to get negative one fifteenth Vegas to the fifth. So if you want to rewrite it, it's negative one fifteenth one minus three X to the fifth. You don't see the parentheses, but they're there. What starts on the inside has to stay on the inside, but let's undo the derivative first. We keep the 3x, we keep the cosine, we're not going to take the antiderivative yet. We're going to undo the derivative first. What starts in the parentheses stays in the parentheses, but we are actually replacing it with u. Many of you, um, you know, don't have to do this. You can, you can keep it as x squared, uh, knowing that you are undoing things. But like, I don't know, it's just this is the proper way to do things. Uh, you will cross out the x's because they cancel. There is the undone derivative of the inside, which occurs first. We then take the antiderivative. It's easy. It's cosine of just u. I could take the antiderivative cosine. Oh, you're worried about the three halves? Don't worry about it. It's a constant times x's. So the constant stays. The antiderivative of cosine is sine. So the antiderivative of cos parentheses is sine parentheses. The antiderivative of cos u is sine u. And then we remember what starts on the inside stays on the inside. So it's really just a different order of the things that we've done. But it's a technique that a lot of you enjoy using because you're still using O's and I's. Some of you are probably getting this answer right away. Fine. Fine. However, we are going to switch gears to definite integrals and finding answers. And we are going to switch gears to problems where all you're asked to do is to rewrite the integral without taking the antiderivative, which means you have to know this technique so that you understand how things will change as you undo the derivative. These problems as well here. So let's do it. reordering things, 
You don't have to move the negative one six in the front. It just makes a little more sense to me. We've undone the derivative of the inside. Now we take the antiderivative of the outside. We get that, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so I need a positive cosine, so I get a negative sine. I don't remember the antiderivative, I just remember the derivative. Cosine's derivative is negative sine. It's been a while since I've done that. I almost forgot it. 4 minus 2x cubed is what started on the inside, so it stays on the inside. You see e to a power? The power is the inside. We want to undo that, so we will take u equal to that. We will take its derivative, and we will undo its derivative. Here is the undone derivative right there. We will be able to see how the derivative will cancel with this x squared that already starts. If the x, and I had this question, I was proud of those who asked it. What happens if the x's don't cancel? You made a mistake or you can't use u substitution. If stuff doesn't cancel, then what we're taking the antiderivative of isn't from a chain. It's not a chain. It's, you have to use something else or you, you did something wrong. This is confusing to a lot of students. This is the antiderivative of one third e to the parentheses. It's just one third e to the parentheses. I did take the antiderivative. It just looks like I didn't. This one's gonna be fun because many of you need to practice the derivative of three over x. How do you take the derivative of three over x? You could use the quotient rule. Many of you have forgotten the quotient rule. Here's the quotient rule. Derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared. You get negative 3 over x squared. Or you rewrite this as 3x to the negative first. So you can use the power rule, negative 3x to the negative second. Now, how do you undo this? Okay, like... This is the derivative, now you have to undo. Multiply by the reciprocal. Every time we divide, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. That's actually what we're doing, multiplying by one over three x squared versus dividing by three x squared. So here, I'm gonna divide by negative three over x squared, but it's the same as multiplying by x squared over negative three. Okay, so now that's, that's, that's a little tricky. Let's see if we get this x squared over negative 3. Oh, okay. That's a du. The x squareds go away. This is a one-third, negative one-third. I'm already taking the antiderivative, but I haven't yet. Take the antiderivative. And then you know, remember what starts in the parentheses stays in the parentheses. There you go. That works out. If you take the derivative of this, you get that. All right. Now, answers. What we were doing was just called an indefinite integral. An indefinite integral. Integrals with no numbers means just take the antiderivative. Indefinite integral means just anti-derive. Definite integrals have numerical answers. Definite integrals talk about accumulating this over the course of this interval of x's. Definite integrals can be plugged into calculators. Indefinite integrals cannot. Definite integrals you can check your answer using a calculator. So like, I know what I'm going to get. I'm going to get the answer 80.88889. Maybe you can search 728 ninths. I'm not gonna be able to get that exact answer probably. I'm gonna leave my answer like a little unsimplified and that's okay. So remember that's our goal. When we have to accumulate, we want a numerical answer. Now, this is why, like, 
antiderivatives are important. It allows us to accumulate. Don't forget, I gotta remind, you know, if you have a derivatives sign, you know how quickly a function is increasing. If you accumulate a derivative, you know by how much we're increasing. Remember, derivatives are in y's per x's. If you accumulate your y's per x's over the interval of x's, you will get y's. So this will be the y's that are changing. How can we find this without a calculator? Well, this is where we have the idea of finding our positions, our f values, which is the antiderivative of f prime. If we have f of zero, which say is just c, we have f of two, which is say, 728 ninths plus C. We know that when you subtract these two, when you subtract this, let's say this is C plus one, and this is uh, uh, you know, 737 ninths. You know, when you subtract these values, this minus this will give you this, because it's like, if I start here, this is how much I'm increasing, I'm gonna get this, this minus this will get you that. So this is how we utilize antiderivatives to find accumulations. Important, don't forget that to evaluate a definite integral, to find an accumulation without a calculator, we must use the antiderivative. Now, what u substitution does is a lot of work up front. We're undoing the derivative up front. So like here, I have this x squared, I have u squared, I have the undone derivative of the inside. Boom, I've gotten some work done already. I've undone the derivative. Now, I'm going to show you what other work you can do right now and I'll show you why we can do it and why it works. I'm also going to plug in zero and two into the inside. I know my antiderivative in the end is going to have parentheses, x cubed plus one to a power, which means to have that f of b minus f of a, like let's just keep it simple. If I want to evaluate f, accumulate f from a to b, I need the antiderivative of b minus the antiderivative of a. Uh, I know I'm going to have to plug in a and b into the inside because it's going to be on the inside. Well, I'm going to just like do that now. Okay, this is called changing your boundaries. Well, we have our x's, x values there. We can change those x's into u's by plugging it into our established relationship. Like, oh, I'm just using x cubed plus 1. Uh, as u. I'm using u uh, as that. And when I do that, I get the values 1 and 9. 1 and 9 are u's. Okay. Now again, all this is doing is just a, a more work up front. And I'll show you how it works. All right, we're still ready to take the antiderivative of the parentheses. Here's the antiderivative of the parentheses. I get this, there's where that nine comes from, plus C. And now I'm talking about, okay, find the change in this antiderivative. This is big F, do big F of nine minus big F of one. But many of you are like, well, don't you want the antiderivative with X's? Don't you want the antiderivative of what we started with. Don't you want this 1 ninth x cubed plus 1 cubed plus c? And don't you want to plug in 0 into 2 into that? Well, think about it. If you plug in 2, you're going to get 9. Oh, yeah, I already did that. I did that work up front. I plugged in 2 into the inside, something I'd have to do at the end. I'm doing it earlier. Plug in 0, what'd you get? You get 1. So what you'll find is that you don't have to go back to x's if you just use u's and if you change your x's to u's. Regardless of which way you do it, whether with this or with this, you're going to get the same answer, 1 ninth 9 cubed. 
plus C, the C is going to go away when I subtract, minus 1 ninth, 1 cubed. This is 728 ninths. 1 ninth times 9 cubed minus 1 ninth, 80.88889. Okay, so like that's use substitution for definite integrals. It just allows you to do more work up front. Just doing a little bit more work up front. All right, let's see what the answer we are going to get. If we had a calculator, our calculator can do a very advanced Riemann sum. We talked about this in unit uh, in lesson two. How when you plug this into your calculator, your calculator does not take antiderivatives. Your calculator just does a Riemann sum. A very advanced Riemann sum. It takes a while. We get this 40.24.24 uh, 40, answer. Okay, cool. Let's see what that's actually equivalent to, exactly equal to. Um, human beings can't accumulate as quickly as calculators. So what we do is we use the antiderivative. But we got to have the correct antiderivative. Let's use the use substitution technique to undo the derivative of the inside. Here's the undone derivative of the inside. Let's go ahead and do as much work as we can up front. We're undoing the derivative up front. And let's just plug in two and three and change our boundaries from x's into u's up front. This becomes four and nine. We have x e to the u times one over two x du. That's the undone derivative. Boom, the x's cancel. Don't forget to take the antiderivative. I'm gonna rewrite this out just so you can see. This is like, I'm not done yet. Now I'm going to take the antiderivative. Now when I take this antiderivative, it is only for this situation where nothing happens. But you have taken the antiderivative. I've already plugged in two and three into the inside. So I'm just plugging four and nine into you. One half e to the ninth minus one half e to the fourth is my answer. One half e to the ninth minus one half e to the fourth. is my answer. There you go. I don't want to do this, but it'll work out. I'm just going to kind of blow through the next two. The next two are a little bit more uh, complicated. Uh, it's a cube root, so I'm going to write it as a one third power. Just a good way for me to check my answers here. Ooh, it's going to be complicated. Let's see. We got Vegas. Let's undo its derivative. Here's the derivative of Vegas. Here is the undone derivative of Vegas. Let's go ahead and. Um, do some work, more work up front. This is seven, this is eight. Oh, that's why, because I don't know what the cube root of seven is. All right, cool. I got X, I got U to the one third. That's Vegas to the one third. That's the parentheses of the one third. I have the undone derivative of Vegas. X is cancel. Okay, now here's the key step. Don't forget to take the antiderivative. If anybody makes mistakes with this process, it's that since we're doing a lot of the work up front, we forget the work that still needs to be done, which is taking the antiderivative. I add one, I multiply by the reciprocal. I still have the one half. I have a plus C. I will plug in seven and eight. If I wanted to go back to X's, sure. You'd plug in zero and one, but it'd be the same thing as if you plug in seven and eight. Getting my answer three eighths, eight to the four thirds minus, again, the C is gonna go away when I subtract, three eighths, seven to the four thirds. Eight to the four thirds is two, two to the fourth is 16. So this is gonna be six. So if I do six minus 
three eighths, seven to the four thirds. <clears throat> We get that same answer. All right. I'm not going to check my work here. I'm just going to trust that I know what I'm doing. There's Vegas. There's Vegas's derivative. Let's undo it first. Let's plug in zero and four now. Do this work first. Let's either do it now or do it later. Uh, might as well do it now. That'll get you ready for the next set of problems. Zero becomes nine. Four becomes twenty-five. Right? 4, 16, 16 plus 9 is 45. Cool. Uh, X, this one's going to cause some problems. So I'll show you all the steps. X's will go away. I'm going to rewrite this as a negative 1 half power, kind of similar to what we did earlier on a problem. I will take the antiderivative, add 1, multiply by the reciprocal. This will be a 2 if I multiply by the reciprocal. However, I still have this constant 1 half, so that's gone. It's going to have a plus C, but when I subtract things, the C is going to go away. Oh, this works out very nicely. I mean, I have to check it now. 25 to the 1 half minus 9 to the 1 half. So that's 5 minus 3, which is 2. Well, you know, nice. Might as well check if it's going to be a nice answer. It's so funny how it's the one that I don't want to check because I'm like, I'm tired of getting crazy answers is the one I should check. It's very much that as we've been doing problems in this class, like we have stuff that looks complicated, but the answers are simple. Don't always think that's the case, but it is here. And like, how did the calculator accumulate this so fast? It's like, it's got techniques where it's doing crazy numerical, uh, numerical Riemann sum techniques so that some things will take longer, other things will take less time uh, to get the right answers. But it's got a lot of stuff programmed in here, a very complicated numerical Riemann sum process to get that answer. It's not taking any time. Okay, a couple more. What happens if you see this? Now, you'll notice this, you might want to simplify. It might be something where you're like, oh, yeah, like divide, right? No. Actually, what we want to do, which is kind of what we did earlier, is rewrite that bottom as a inside to the negative first power. This is, uh, this is the way to go about things. What you'll notice is you'll have like a derivative of the inside up top, and you'll have like the inside on the bottom. Parentheses to the first will be on the bottom, the inside and then it's derivative right there. So like, that's how we're gonna undo it. Anyways, let's, let's say like that didn't vibe with you. I think you guys have been trained to like write things up as, as negative powers and, and you're okay with that. So there's the inside, there's its derivative, there is its undone derivative. Let's do some more work up front. Let's change our X's into U's. Let's just plug in what we'd have to plug in at the end now. Why? Because we can and because it's required for you to do in the future. We got 2X. We got this U to the negative first. We have the undone derivative. Oh, that's nice. The 2X and the 2X are just gone, leaving me with just U to the negative first. Don't forget, the antiderivative of a negative first power is a log. We plug in 2, we plug in 5. If you went back to x's, you'd plug in 1 and 2. Well, you'd get 2 and 5. It's just I did the work up front. The c is going to go away when I subtract. I get log 5 minus log 2. Uh, heads up, log properties. You can rewrite this as log 5 divided by 2. Remember the log property when you're subtracting logarithms? You could divide the stuff, it's very much a, uh, like an exponent property. 
So because I can and because I like doing it, I'm going to check my answer. Many of you are skipping this part or you don't listen to me anyways. There we go. There we go. The next two are the same. Um, so I'm just going to plow through them. Rewrite this so you can see. See how like the derivative of the bottom is the top. You see like the derivative of x cubed is an x squared. So that works out. It's not a negative power, it's just a negative constant, the undone derivative right there. Let's do some more work up front. Let's go ahead and change our boundaries, change our bases. I don't know, like I've, I've said it correctly in the past, but I've said it incorrectly in the past. Plugging in one, I get negative one. Plugging in two, I get three minus four times eight, which is 32. So that's negative 29. Great. I don't know how this problem is going to work out, but we'll see. Oof. The x squares do cancel, but the constants don't. It's a good example of why you need an um, absolute. Anti-derive. I've already done the work, so I'm not going to go back to x's because I'm going to get the same results. We'll end up with negative 1 12 log. Absolute negative 29 is positive 29 minus negative 1 12 log absolute 1. Uh, absolute negative 1, which is just 1. The log of 1 is just a big fat 0. So my answer is this. And one more. The lots. Oh, cool. Uh, same deal. Rewrite this as a parentheses to the negative first power. There's the derivative of the inside, and here is the undone derivative of the inside. We got x u to the negative one half. dx is replaced by one over negative two x du. The x's will go away. Thank you. Let's do some more work up front. Negative one and one. Plugged in. We're gonna have to do it later anyways. Is three and three. Oh, we're gonna get zero. Yo, this is a great example of like when you change your boundaries, something might happen. Where it's like, all right, actually, I'm done. Why did I why did I put zero there? Why did I put zero there? Because we have an integral from three to three. You know, it's like there's not an interval. Ooh, I was cramped up. There's not an interval in which to accumulate, so we can't. There's no width zero. All right, the last set of problems are like the problems where it's like, yo, use substitution, helpful. Okay. Here is one problem type. You'll see this, a couple of these on your test. We want to rewrite this where the derivatives undone, the boundaries are changed, and using your definite integral properties that you learned last class, you can also change this number. So we want to completely rewrite this so that we kind of do all of the work up front we're going to see what things are going to change, how things are going to change. And we're not even going to take an antiderivative. We're just going to stop before we take the antiderivative and see, like, what do we got after things are changing? One of the most important uh, properties that you're going to remember is that if we have something like this, something like that, remember from last class that this three could come out and then you could 
divide both sides by the three. And all of a sudden you get this integral of zero to two of F is four, okay? So I'm going to uh, re re remember that because we're gonna be using that. Now, you guys hate notational things. We gotta get used to them. The next, this page is all notational antiderivatives. Just see what you see. You have an inside, you have a vagus. You have like what starts in the parentheses that's going to have to stay in the parentheses. Well, we still have to undo the derivative uh, if you're using this process. Let's undo the derivative first. So I got u is 5x. I got du is 5dx. That's not yet done. Here is the undone derivative, one fifth. Okay. Let's go ahead and do some more work up front. This turns into 5. This turns into 10. I have the three, I have F of Vegas, I have its undone derivative, and I got that. All of a sudden I realize I got five to 10, three fifths F of U equals six. Here is where we use this property, which we did last class. If we wanted to go back to our day two quiz, there was some stuff where it's like, I gave you this, but you had to then like get rid of this three fifths. It'll multiply everything by five thirds. Getting me the integral answer that I'm looking for. I want a five, I want a 10. I just have f of u and du inside. This becomes 10. Six becomes 10, y, six divided by three is two times five is 10. Cool? So remembering that, Let's keep going and rewrite these integrals so that we just have this. We got Vegas, we got its derivative, we got its undone derivative right here. One over two X is the undone derivative of Vegas. Let's go ahead and do some of the work up front, plugging in X's, get U's, we got one and four. The three X stays, I got F of parentheses, F of Vegas, U is replacing Vegas, we're undoing things. We get the X's that will cancel. We have this three halves, which we need to get rid of. Multiply everything by two thirds and the three halves are gone. Giving me the integral I'm looking for, one to four of F of U DU equals six divided by three is two times two is four. It's funny how I use six for our home. We're not taking antiderivatives. We're kind of doing everything but. And that's what this problem set is preparing you for. Hey, can you do everything but take the antiderivative? Could you rewrite this? I know there's like some reasoning why it is helpful in certain situations to do this. Ooh. One to zero, if I plug in two, I get zero. If I plug in one, I get one. I got a four X, I got F of U. I got a negative one over two X du equals six. Four X and two X just gives me a negative two. I got to divide by negative two to get it out of there. So I got zero, one to zero F of u du. Divide by negative two, I got negative three. That's interesting. There's Vegas. There's its derivative. Here is its derivative undone. It's just a step-by-step -step process, like O and I. Oh, nothing changes there. But I do have to multiply by four to get rid of that one-fourth, giving me zero to one, F of U, 24. Okay, last one's very similar. Um, let's see, what do I have? F prime, all of these are F primes. What do I have up here? F, okay, keep that in mind. You're not going to accumulate F prime horizontally dilated, like that two on the inside means you're like dilating F prime, rather, 
When you take the antiderivative, you can use f's values, f primes antiderivatives f, you use f values to help you. So um, watch what this looks like. And again, it's a notational antiderivative, but we got to make sure we undo the derivative of the inside. Do all the work up front. I got negative four to four. I got f prime of u. I have the undone derivative, which is a half. Now, we did this last class, so we're kind of ready for it. The antiderivative of f prime is f. The antiderivative of one half f prime is one half f. A constant in front of a derivative is not going to change things. So I just have the antiderivative one half f plus c. The c will go away when I plug in four and negative four. So I have one half f of four. I've already plugged in negative two into two x. I've already plugged in two into two x. And then minus one half f of negative four f of 4 is the value you see. This is the value of f at 4. That's negative 1. f of negative 4 is negative 2. So it's negative 1 half plus 1, so it's a half. Cool? Let me do this one up here. This is like a simple, simple enough one where it's like, I honestly could have done the first one. When you have those simple undoing of things, you don't have to worry about canceling X's. You don't really have anything outside. I probably would, in this instance, just anti-derive F prime of AX plus B, just like I did at, at the beginning of the homework. I would say the antiderivative is F of negative 2X plus 1, what starts in the parentheses stays, and then I have the undone derivative. Going back to anti-derive first, undo the derivative second. Listen, if after learning this U substitution technique, you're just like, listen, I don't want to go back to where I came from because I didn't really understand it the first time. I love techniques. Use it. Just taking the antiderivative at first means like we still have to do the work of plugging in the three and the one. Um, negative six, negative five. Oh, shoot. Negative four was zero. This is zero. This is negative a half. Okay. Uh, minus, I plug in one. Again, plug in the end first. End, ending position, ending position minus starting position is our displacement or our accumulation of velocity. Meters per second over seconds. Displacement, ending position minus starting position. Displacement. Make sure you do end minus start, not the other way around. So it becomes f of negative 1. f of negative 5 is negative 2, so this becomes a positive 1. f of negative 1. Oh, I did it. I did it. All right, guys, how do I find this point? <clears throat> I have a slope down 1 over 1, 2, 3. I have a slope of negative one third. If I go down one over three, that's the same as going down a third over one. I can go up a third, that's gonna be four thirds. You could just figure it out, but don't guess. So that's four thirds. Here probably best to use the technique, get all the work done up front, just worry about the antiderivative. Antiderive, the one half stays, I got f of u plus c, I've already plugged in one and four, one half f of four minus one half f of one Negative one, zero. So this is negative half. Last two. This one's tricky. It looks like that. 
the inside is F. This is tricky. Many of you are like, wait, what? what's going on? F, F prime, the inside's F, yes. Or, or, the derivative of log absolute F of X is one over F of X times F prime. You can go straight here. Probably use substitution, it's tricky for this. This is the antiderivative. You plug in negative three and three into it. You can't find this answer because f of three is zero and you don't know what the log of zero is, but like you can think about what you would have to do. Okay. If you want to use substitution route, this is what it would look like. Plugging in three and negative three, what would that look like? f of negative three. Okay, f of negative three is two. All right, so like we're actually doing like a lot of interesting work up ahead. f of positive three is zero. So that's plugging in negative three and three into that. I have f prime u to the negative one. I have one over f prime. Those f primes cancel. The antiderivative is log u, but u is f of x. You can either say it's log 0 minus log 2, or if you do this, you get that too. Um, th these we will have on our test. But these, it might be easiest to just be like, oh, e to the f's derivative is e to the f times f prime. This is your antiderivative. Plug in negative two and two. You get e to the f of two minus e to the f of negative two. f of two is one. f of negative two is going to be five thirds. And that's your answer. If you were to do the u substitution technique, it's going to be a little bit messy. But I'll show you. The inside is f. Its derivative is f prime. Its derivative undone is 1 over f prime. f of 2, do the work up front, f of 2 is 1. f of negative 2 is that 5 thirds. We're just going up a third. We have f prime, we have e to the u, we have one over f prime, the f primes, the derivative of the inside undoes itself. We then take the antiderivative, we plug in one and five thirds, and that's our answer. We'll probably practice those two before as they are different than the other ones that we did, but that's really it. This is like something you might just be able to recognize and see. Uh, but that was good. Uh, we'll see you out there. Only a couple more homeworks left before we start reviewing. You will have homework, but it's not with new stuff. That's good to know. Peace.